One of the most impressive accomplishments in all of sports, in my estimation, has been what we saw from the Buffalo Bills from 1990 through 1990. Right. They go to the Super Bowl, they get their heart right. ripped out. What a loser Marv Levy is. How do they recover? Right. right. Well, but, but and, and I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. They go back to the Super Bowl the next year. They get blown out. They go back to the Super Bowl the next year. They get blown out. They kept, they kept coming back. And I say that because when you think about Sean Payton's career arc in New Orleans, immediately he turned around a team that had been, for the most part of its existence, ass. Right. For the most part. Right. Immediately. On the heels of Katrina, a horrible tragedy that was visited upon the entire region. The one shining light as – New Orleans and surrounding areas recovered from Katrina was the Saints and how they 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 went straight to the NFC Championship. Yeah, lost Sean to the Bears first, right? Year. Straight to, lost to the Bears. Great, and, and you know, actually, kind of something. Maybe they got a chance to win this thing against the Bears. Who knows? That's how good they were. Kept pushing, got to the Super Bowl and won it. And then came the bounty scandal, which was, I think, overhyped. I think overblown. I think the agenda was to create the impression that the league cared about player health and safety at a time when everyone thought the league didn't. Right. Concussion lawsuits were coming in by the day, dozens by the day. They overhyped it, overtrumped it, and and threw Sean Payton out for a year. So then he comes back after being out for a year. The defense was horrible for a few seasons. They finally get the defense settled down. And think about what happened. 2017, Minneapolis Miracle. Horrible way yeah. to have your season end. Horrible. Deflating. Shattering. They came back the next year and went to the NFC Championship. Had that uncalled pass interference by the Rams. Horrible, deflating way to have your shot at the Super Bowl taken away from you. What did they do? They came back the next year, got to the playoffs, hosted a playoff game against the Vikings, lost in overtime on an uncalled offensive pass interference by Kyle Rudolph. What did they do? They came back the next year, 2020. And they had the game won against the Buccaneers. They're up 10 points in the third 10. quarter. Right. The st- the, yeah, the strip. They're going down. They're going to go up by 13 or 17. And uh, C- C- Jared Cook, the yeah, tight end, the ball right. gets ripped out by Antoine Winfield Jr. And that changed everything. I mean, four straight years, they had their hearts ripped out. And they kept coming back. And in 21, it all fell apart because Drew Brees retired and COVID wrecked. It it was a mess. And they still almost made the playoffs. Yeah. So my my point is this. Don't talk to me about how many Super Bowls you've won. Show me what you've done the other years. With the talent you have, with the adversity you've faced, what have you accomplished? And people are saying, oh, let's look at Sean Payton's one loss record and Mike McCarthy's one loss record. And why are we assuming one is so much better than the other? Well... Because one is a lot better than the other. Because we know things. We've seen things. We understand detail-oriented. We understand that there's a higher level of achievement that Sean Payton is able to push a team to. And Mike McCarthy's done great things as a head coach. But, Chris, I think you'd agree with me that Sean Payton is a step above Mike McCarthy. I, I, I uh, Totally. I do, yes. I mean, you know, maybe more than a step. <clears throat> and I don't mean that to be disrespectful to Mike McCarthy. I got a lot of respect for what he has done. But, you know, I think to the point you're trying to make is – Sean Payton was driving the ship with the New Orleans Saints, right? Drew Brees, yes, we know he's really good, but he came from a team where they were like, you're not good enough for us, and he made him into something and built it just what's perfect for him. And then Drew capitalized and took advantage of all that. You know, Mike, If you're going to compare Mike McCarthy, which I, I know I've seen those comparisons online too, I would just go, hey, done a lot, did a lot of good things too. But the captain of that ship was number 12, okay? They won a Super Bowl because number 12 did some of the most amazing shit we've ever seen in the league in a playoff run where he literally just took over games. And I'm not lying, Mike. You know it. You've talked about it. No. Those were – 2010. Right. I mean, that was – Right. That was just like, whoa, you, you can't stop this guy. I don't care who you are, you know? And he beat teams that were better than the Packers almost by himself. And then won a Super Bowl. So I think that's that's the difference. You know, Mike McCarthy went to the Cowboys and went, Whoa, hey, I don't want to call the plays. You call the plays, Kellen Moore. You think Sean Payton's gonna do that this year? I mean, you know these you know he's not. So that in itself, I think, just tells you all you need to know. I've got a great story to tell about Sean Payton that I I, I I'm not sure I can tell yet. But he's due to be with us in Phoenix 
next Friday. And I assume he's still going to do that because he's done that he tour. Better. What is it? Zebra Technologies. Right. He does that every year during the Super Bowl. And he's on the show with us every year. I'm going to try to reach out and he's got other things to do in the short term. But I, I, I want to let him tell the story that I'd like to tell. That that, that that was kind of the moment I realized that this is a guy that is going to put in the work. He's going to bust his ass. He's going to stay up till 2, 3 in the morning. He's going to constantly be thinking about ways to make the offense better, constantly coming up with ideas for plays that will make the team better as it relates to the defense they're about to face. You know, we've we've criticized college coaches like Cliff Kingsbury for relying upon system and not adapting enough to the defense that they face week in and week out. Sean Payton is the master of knowing what defense he's going to face and of adjusting his offense on the fly, installing new plays in a walkthrough in the hotel ballroom the day of the game. Whatever it takes to get an edge against the defense that he's about to be facing. And it requires a massive commitment. That's why he's worth the money. That's why the great coaches are worth the money. Bill Belichick, Bill Belichick, no days off. And when he's working, it's full speed, nonstop, go, go, go. Fill the days with effort aimed at building that possible, maybe little fleeting advantage. That's the thing that folks don't realize. So much of the grinding that's done is wasted because the opportunity never arises to take advantage of that extra knowledge that you've acquired, that scheming that you've done. But when it does come along and you're able to immediately access it in that computer inside of your skull, that's when the magic happens. And it's not obvious how or why, but it all is is something that has its foundation laid, staying up till 2 a.m. every night, thinking about it every day, obsessing over it, and coming up with that one play that you're going to have in your back pocket that you may or may not ever use in your life. But, man, if that moment comes and it all falls together, oh, wow. And, Chris, sometimes it happens in ways that, that aren't, obviously eventful to the game i mean i've heard stories about how just this one little twist this one little tweak yeah you know made a difference on a third down in the third quarter right and you converted that third down and you kept the drive going and nobody's like hey that's the moment that was the turning point of the game but the coach knows that thing i pulled out of my ass that i'd been waiting to use at the right time that was kind of the turning point of the game Uh, agreed it's the nuance it's the nuance it's back to the salesmanship it's all those things that separate you know, the the, co- the the great coaches. It is. I mean, as we know, most of these guys, they all got the same plays. It's just about how you package it, you know, what's your feel for breaking down defenses and <clears throat> how you can teach it and sell it to your team. And that's where Sean Payton's amazing. You know, I've been at one, I've been in some places and we have a play and I go, damn, this play is like, I don't know. It never gets open for us. What the hell? Why? I mean, I watch other teams and damn, they're hitting it, but we can't ever get open and get this completion. You know, then I get with a Josh McDaniels or somebody like that. And it's the same damn play. And I go, Oh, this is damn. They're teaching the slot receiver against cover three to run the route like this. And then when it's cover two, just a little different nuance to the route, but makes all the difference. And now the guy's open every freaking time we drop back. Ran the play 100 times a year before. Nobody was ever open, you know, for Kerry Collins and the Tennessee Titans. Go to the Denver Broncos the next year. We call the play. Brandon Marshall's open to the same play every time we do it. And that's because of, yes, the nuance that you're talking about. And that's where Sean Payton's great. And then that's where he usually has really good defense on top of that because he's a great offense and knows all these nuances about that. He knows the defensive guys that have given him some issues you know, with his nuance and how he calls and packages plays. So that's another aspect that he'll bring to the team to where, yeah, he's going to find a Greg Williams or a Dennis Allen, a guy that's creative and going to give offensive issues as well, you know, to the other team's offense. And that's where he's great as well. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.